In this lesson, we will learn about the CSS property named transform. The transform property is aptly named. It lets us transform and manipulate the appearance of elements in unique ways. Throughout this lesson, we will learn how to transform elements in four primary ways. Number one, we can rotate elements. Number two, we can change the scale or size of elements. Number three, we can skew an element. So that means taking a rectangle and making it become a parallelogram. And number four, we can change the positioning of elements. Let's begin with number one, rotate. Here we are in the web browser and we are viewing an example page that I have set up. We can see there are two boxes. This one's titled example A and this one reads example B. Now in this lesson, we are going to use the transform property to manipulate the appearance of this first box, the one that reads example A. In our style sheet, here's the rule for the example A box, so we can begin adding new declarations here to affect the box. And our first goal will be to rotate the element. So in our CSS, I'll create a new declaration that begins with transform. Now we wanted to rotate the box, so I will use the rotate function. And let's say we want to rotate it 25 degrees. If we save and refresh, we can see the box is rotated. The rotate function will rotate the content in a clockwise fashion. So if we increase this from 25 degrees to 90 degrees, you can see the content has been rotated clockwise a clean 90 degrees. Now obviously there are 360 degrees in a full rotation, so everything is relative to that figure. So if we placed a value of 360 within the function, it will appear as if nothing has changed, but really the image has rotated fully and is right back where it would start originally. The function can also receive negative values. So for example, if we say 15 degrees, it rotates clockwise, but if we say negative 15 degrees, it will rotate counterclockwise 15 degrees. I think you get the point. So that is the rotate function in a nutshell. Moving on, let's discuss transform's ability to adjust the scale or size of elements. So just for the time being, if we remove this line of code and refresh, we can see our content is back to normal. Now let's say we want to adjust the size or scale. Transform can use the scale function and the value that we provide it does not need a unit of measurement. So we're not going to enter a number and then PX for pixels. We're entering a multiplier. So if I say 1.3, the content grows by a scale that is 1.3 times larger than the original content. So for example, to double the size of the content, we can say scale two. Or to cut the content in half in terms of size, we could say 0.5. Now the scale function is an excellent segue into a very important side note. And that is that the amount of space that an element occupied within the natural flow of the page prior to the transformation is the exact same amount that it will occupy after the transformation. So for example, if we remove this transform scale line, you can see that the example A box reverts back to its normal natural state. And because the box has bottom margin of 30 pixels, this is where the example B box sits. But if we increase the size of the example A box using transform scale to 1.5, notice that the example B box does not move down to accommodate the size change. The example A box is simply overlapping the example B box. As far as the rest of the page is concerned, the example A box is still only this large. So when we use the transform property, we are quite literally only manipulating that particular element independently of the rest of the page. With that important side note taken care of, let's move on from scale and begin to discuss skew. Skew allows us to tilt an element. So you can imagine a rectangle becoming a parallelogram. So in our code, let's remove the scale line. So our content is back to its natural state. And let's attempt to skew the content. Transform 
skew x. So we're going to skew it horizontally. And let's say 15 degrees. If we wanted a more exaggerated effect, we could increase it to 25 degrees. And if we wanted to skew it in the other direction, we could provide a negative value. So that's skewing an element horizontally. We used skew x. If we wanted to skew it vertically, we can say skew y. And if we wanted to skew an element both horizontally and vertically, we can simply include a space, skew x, 15 degrees. And that is skew in a nutshell. Now we saw how easy it was to include both skew y and skew x within a single transform declaration. And this segues nicely into a new topic. This is the exact syntax we can use to combine the different transform functions that we've learned about. So let's remove this line completely for just a moment. And let's imagine that we want to both rotate example A and increase its scale. So in a single transform declaration, we can say rotate 20 degrees space scale 1.5. So this is quite powerful. You can use your imagination to concoct different recipes which use different combinations of the transform functions. So back to the lesson overview, we've learned about rotate, we've covered scale, we've seen skew in action. The final topic is using the transform property to control the positioning of content. The first component of adjusting the positioning of content comes in the form of a property named transform origin. Now before we delve into this new property, let's first simplify our transform example. I'm going to remove the rotate. So the only effect that's taking place on the example A box is that we've multiplied the scale by 1.5. And you'll notice that it appears as if the content has expanded in all four directions. Or in other words, it's as if it's used its original center as its frame of reference or pivot point or transform origin. So what if instead we wanted the content to use its original top left corner and grow out only in this direction? That is where the transform origin property comes into play. So if we're looking for the top left corner to be our pivot point, we can say 0, 0. Let's review the syntax that we just used. These two values represent the horizontal and vertical positioning of our point of origin or our pivot point for the transform. In a way, you can think of these as the longitude and latitude for our point of origin. So we used 0, 0 to specify the top left corner of the original content. By default, the browser will use 50%, 50%. So this should look familiar. That is the exact way that the browser will position the transform if we have no code at all for the point of origin. Now just to make sure that this system is clear, let's imagine that we wanted the point of origin or the pivot point to be the top right corner of the original content. So we wanted the content to grow in this direction. So horizontally, we would want to travel the full distance 100%. And vertically, we wouldn't need to travel at all. We would just stay at the very top. Excellent. So transform origin is the first transform related way of controlling the positioning of content. Let's move on to the second component. It's a bit simpler to understand. So I'm going to remove both of these lines of code. So we're starting back from square one. Let's imagine that we wanted this example A box to sit 20 pixels lower on the page than it does naturally. But we don't want the rest of the page to react accordingly. So we don't want example B to also be pushed down 20 pixels. We want to affect this example A box independently from the rest of the page. We can use the transform property and use a function named translate y. So I will provide this function with a value of 20 pixels. And we can see that our box moved down 20 pixels and the rest of the page did not react. So even if we increase this value to 50 pixels, it will simply 
overlap the content below it. The content below it will not adapt and be pushed down as well. So that was an example of translate Y. It allows us to move down the Y axis, so vertically. If we wanted to move to the right, we can use a function named translate X. So if I specify 100 pixels, you can see we've moved to the right 100 pixels. Now in instances where you want to move both vertically and horizontally, we can combine these into a single function simply named translate. We'll provide the horizontal value first and the vertical value second. And we have the exact same effect. Notice that we did include a comma after the first value. So that is the translate function in a nutshell. Now you may be scratching your head and wondering why would we use transform translate when we can simply say position relative and then use the top and left properties to create the exact same effect? That is an excellent question and there's no way for me to answer it without revealing what we're going to be covering in our next lesson. It makes sense to use position relative in tandem with top left or bottom right properties for layout purposes. Now, as we will learn in our next lesson, it makes sense to use transform translate when we are trying to animate or transition content from one position to another in a smooth fashion. Yes, you heard that correctly. We can use CSS to animate our content. For the time being, just know that the translate function is hardware accelerated, which means when it comes time in the next lesson to animate content from one position to the next, the animation will be silky smooth if we use translate, whereas it might be a bit jittery if we tried to animate the top or left property. Now in the context of this lesson, we're getting way ahead of ourselves and I don't want you to get confused worrying about animations. I simply wanted you to understand why the translate function is useful. So to close out this particular lesson, here's a quick review. We learned that we can use the transform property to manipulate content and we reviewed rotate, scale, skew, translate, and we also learned how to have fine grained control of the transformation using the transform origin property. I encourage you to experiment with the properties and functions that we just reviewed because in our next lesson, we are going to get our first look at animating content. We are going to learn about transitioning smoothly from one value to another. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I will see you in the next lesson.